Okay, let's review Augustus by John Williams. Hi everyone and welcome to Back in Time Fiction, the channel dedicated to historical fiction and historical fantasy. I am Baptiste Pinson Wu, the author of Yellow Sky Revolt and Heroes of Chaos, the first two books of the Three Kingdoms Chronicles series that is still going on. Augustus by John Williams is a book I never thought I would read because, well, mostly because it's about Augustus, who is usually quite a downer. He's usually not depicted as someone who is particularly brave or fair or even nice. He's more on the cold, manipulative side. And I just didn't think I could enjoy a whole book about him. And the thing is, I was dead wrong. It's not the first time this happened. I actually had exactly the same issue with um, Lancelot going from Bernard Cornwell to Giles Christians. Uh, so you'd think I would learn, but no, I did not really. I actually picked up Augustus because a bunch of people around me started reading it and really enjoying it. Um, so I thought, hey, you know what, good timing to start reading Augustus and I hope you will feel like it after this video too. If you haven't, of course. So first thing first, Augustus is an epistolary novel, something I feel like we need more of. When it is done well, these kind of novels, um, they bring a very unique experience to a story, even when the story is already fairly known, such as there is the one of uh, Octavius Caesar. This novel is actually split into three parts. Uh, the first one starts from Octavius' youth, right before the assassination of his uncle, all the way to his victory over Mark uh, Antony. The second part is more about his later years and all the difficulties he has with his succession, his family, and so on. There was actually a lot I didn't know about his life um, in part two, and I'm surprised how interesting that was. During part one and part two, we don't have any letter or document from uh, Octavius himself. Everything is being said um, by his friends, his detractors, his uh, relatives, uh, poets and philosophers as well. We don't even have a lot of words coming from Octavius himself, even through the dialogues. And to me, this is really where the writing of John Williams shines in, um, in this novel, is he managed to give a voice to so many different characters, uh, and not just a voice, but really a personality, and you never get confused about who is who um, as you read their letters. And then you have a short third part at the end that is exclusively from uh, uh, Octavius or Augustus himself, um, at the end of his life where it goes back on his success and failures and he comments on what uh, he wishes he had done differently or maybe his hope for the future and so on and so on. Um, that was really good actually this third part but I was, I was glad it didn't last longer than it does. While I can't say that I took an interest in every character that is being used in this novel, um, I'm quite surprised about how much I cared about some of them. Now, I could see myself being very interested in Messena or Agrippa, but like when he brought, for example, um, the daughter of Augustus, uh, whom I didn't really know, uh, that became very interesting too. You know, I, I was actually very interested in, in her story, uh, even though I didn't know anything about it beforehand. The style is obviously amazing. This is John Williams. Um, you can feel the attention he gave to each sentence. Uh, I actually don't believe I stumbled on any sentence at all. And I read this novel much faster than any other epistolary novel before. I usually take them one chapter or one letter at a time. Uh, Augustus, I think I read it in three sittings, which is very fast for me, especially since I became a published writer. So let's sum up. You know what, actually I've been told a few times that I should rate the books that I review on this channel. I usually just uh, give my thoughts, but I should give a, uh, I should use a system of rating. So I don't know if it's necessary, but please let me know of the, this system that I will use from now on, um, just to see if I'm gonna keep it up. I don't want to give one global rating for each book. Instead, I will divide uh, my rating into four parts. First, the style or the writing, if you prefer. Here, it's gonna be a five stars, uh, no problem. That was quite easy. Second, the characters. Uh, for Augustus, it's gonna be uh, four stars. 
We don't get much from the main character himself, which in some way works very well, but it doesn't help the reader connect with Augustus. And there are still a few characters that I didn't care so much about. So let's say four stars. This story, again, that's gonna be a four. The novel Augustus faces two difficulties here. First, it's an epistolary, so it's not always the easiest format to give a great sense of pace. And it's a fairly known story, so you won't be uh, flabbergasted about what is happening in there. And uh, flabbergasted is a really cool word. I think I should use it more often. Yet it moves naturally well, so yeah, four stars. And last point, the history. Here it's gonna be five stars for Augustus. It was well researched, not overwhelming, uh, which sometimes it tends to be uh, in historical fiction, uh, and it was superbly immersive. As I said, I didn't know much about Augustus after Actium, uh, but this book left me wanting to know more about it, and that's really the point of historical fiction. Uh, so yeah, five stars. There you go. Tell me in the comments what you thought of Augustus and of this review. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and go check my books on Amazon, please. I'll come back very soon with more content on the very best genre of literature, that's historical fiction. Actually, next time is gonna be a great interview. I'm looking forward to it. So I'll see you very soon. Bye.